Shout out Gooch. Yeah. Let it stop. It stopped yeah. eventually last yeah. time. Let's get it, man. What the Me fuck? Me personally, I don't even think it's in there. Okay. 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 All of my niggas is rocks. Some of my niggas is rocks. Bruh, I know why. Most of y'all niggas is rocks. Bruh, you forgot to turn it off when you recorded that. Like, boom, bitch. Get away. Like a bitch, just been a band of my own. Open that motherfucker's shoes fit. Go outside and I'ma catch a body. It's in the intro. Then I phone up Jay Lash. Watch. Anyway, man, fuck that. We ain't starting over again, bro. Bro, your ass is drunk. I'm drunk. Anyway, man. Patron. Who would have thought that some nigga that we ain't never heard speak would become the talk of the internet immediately? Mm Mm-hmm. Hit the live button. (laughs) Got up there sounding like me. Sat in his chair. Sounding like me. He did some shit that I would have done. Or in the car. Nigga or in the car. Nigga said so much shit. Nigga, fuck that. I want to go on a rant right now. Mm. This nigga said so much shit that motherfuckers are scared to say because they scared they're going to get canceled. Right. Right. That showed that all of these niggas is some motherfucking bitch ass pussies. Mm-hmm. That's what they is. All these politically correct bitch ass niggas up there scared to say anything. Bro, out there trying to, motherfuckers trying to throw Dave Chappelle under the bus. Bill, what's his name? Bill Murray? Bill Murray, Or is yeah. it Billy Crystal? One of them bills. Throw them under the bus because they said shit is too politically correct. Fucking Kwame Brown got famous again overnight. At first he was famous for being a bus. Now he famous for flaming pussy ass niggas up. Yep. You know like Charlemagne. And he ain't fucking pulling no punches. That nigga is saying whatever the fuck he want. Moral of the story, stop being bitch-ass niggas all the time. Fucking pussies anyway. So now, let's go into a little bit of what he actually been doing. Go ahead. Or we can start like this. Kwame Brown, Mm -hmm. number one. Number one draft pick in the NBA. Was that 2001? I I think it's 2001. 2001. I know he played on the same team with Kobe in the game that Kobe scored 81. Oh, no, they scored 82 combined. 82, really? yeah, 82 combined. <laughs> Kobe scored 81, and he's had one point. But <laughs> Nigga, did you see all them screens that's neither he was here setting? Nor there. Did you see them screens he was setting? That's, that's neither here nor there. I'm pretty sure he was in that game. But Kwame Brown is labeled as a bust. But in in over overnight, like you said, Mm-hmm. He's setting the record straight. Coming out at everybody. Became a internet sensation overnight. Uh, that's the dog in the background. You're going to be hearing that. So, anyway. Yeah, he became an internet sensation overnight because he felt like niggas is disrespecting him and he fucking tired of it. Mm-hmm. Now, my question to you is <clears throat> just a broad question to start the whole discussion off mm-hmm. is what do you think about what Kwame is doing? Do you think he should, that he's justified in what he's saying that it's just funny or that he should shut the fuck up? What do you think? I think it's a mixture of two that you said. All right. He's justified mm-hmm. and it's funny. Well, it's damn so funny. I don't so think funny. he should stop. I don't think he should stop at all. Because Kwame Brown has a voice. Right. He has put in his work as an NBA player, whether you like it or not. Bro, th- was, this, this if, is... if he was a bust, it is okay. He played. He made his money. He is He's etched in NBA this, history. This is the I thing. I would go as far this, as saying This that. is the thing. This is the thing, right? Mm-hmm. He was a bust right. because he was the number one overall pick, right? Mm-hmm. But he played 12 years. Yeah. Was he really a bust? How many motherfuckers played 12 years, bro? How many? Yeah. 
and they it, they somebody was finding something to do with him that's over that saying. period of time. Whether it was just like you said, set and screen. <laughs> he what, was on that no, no, court no, no, for no, no, a no. fucking reason. Twelve he years. He said that. Don't take his words away from him. Okay. He said. Did you see those motherfucking screens that I was setting when that nigga scored 81 damn points? Just give it some time. All anyway. right, we back. We back. Um, what was I saying? Setting them screens, 81 points. Anyway, that was Kobe. yeah. Don't take his words away. That that was one of his. That was one of his greatest fucking. Uh, that was one of his greatest moments on live when it come to comedy. Mm -hmm. When that nigga looked at the camera with seriousness in his eyes mm -hmm. and a straight fucking face talking about the day that Kobe Bryant scored 81 motherfucking points. Mm -hmm. That's, ain't that the second most points in NBA history in the game besides Wilt Chamberlain scoring 100? Yes. And looked at the camera and said, did you see those motherfucking screens I was setting? We scored 82 combined. You <laughs> can't. I mean, I would say the same thing too. I would say the same thing too. Yeah, but but, but any, any motherfucker who hating on it, I would say, motherfucker, what was you doing when I was playing in that game? Sitting on the bench or at home watching. But back to the question, I feel like he's justified to say whatever the, whatever he wants because mm -hmm. I believe Kwame Brown does have rank after playing in the. NBA for twelve years. Right, he can say whatever the fuck he wants, and this he is can talk. He can talk to the people he played alongside with, however he wants. Right, and I think it's funny because I still don't think he should stop anything he's doing. This is at the, all. This is the reason why I agree with that. Right, mm -hmm. number one. No matter if motherfuckers get mad or not. He be saying some real shit up there. Yes, that's number one. Yes, he be calling niggas out for shit that. Motherfuckers is getting rich, and when you get rich, you can spend your money however the fuck you want. I ain't gonna sit up here and tell no nigga how to spend their money, but he did. He said some real shit about how niggas just throw money down the drain, mm -hmm. and according to him now, he uses his money to help out other people. That's neither here nor there. Right? Yeah, but I don't. And know. that's also a thing though. It's a lot of it's a lot of stuff out there about NBA players and NFL players going and blowing all their money and being broke as fuck. Right. And then the other thing that I think about it, that I agree with you with it um, for, is because the motherfuckers who he talking to, mm -hmm. namely Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, yep. motherfucking Stephen A. Smith and Charlemagne the guy, mm -hmm. right? That's the main rants that he goes on on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. And I can I can say I actually seen that Charlemagne the God one today. Mm -hmm. He called him a rapist. So mm -hmm. saying that he's going in depth about these niggas. <laughs> he's talking real <laughs> live cash shit about these niggas. Yeah, and the reason why I say I listed them niggas is what do they all have in common, bro? They talk shit about motherfuckers all the time. Yes, and they talk about niggas any type of way that they want to talk about them. At all times. Mm -hmm. Even as much as Charlemagne sitting there on the breakfast club Fuck. talking shit to them in their faces. Bruh. In their faces. I, I, don't, I don't know. I respect Charlemagne hustle mm -hmm. to get where he got in the fucking um, industry of radio, bro. But I don't. <laughs> bro, I mean, you're going to have to hear the dog. The motherfucker is in the cage because he couldn't fucking understand that it's a privilege to roam free up in this bitch. Meaning the nigga he hit the camera. Knocked the camera the fuck over. We had to start over. So, so he's going to be in the cage barking. I will silence him as needed. Don't say that, bro. The motherfucking Peter people might come over here looking for a dead dog. You say you're going to silence him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Charlemagne the God, as much as I respect the 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 waves that he's made doing what he does, bro, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan. Bro. Yeah, don't get me wrong, you're a <laughs> black man out here making money, nigga. At the end of the day, I'm I'm gonna salute you because you're making your bread, but we don't fuck with you. I mean, I ain't gonna say I don't fuck with him, but I don't listen to. I him. don't fuck with you. I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't know the nigga. But I damn sure don't listen to his fucking radio show. <laughs> That's yeah. what I don't do. I don't listen to his radio mm -hmm. show. 
I see the viral moments that everybody see on this fucking radio show to Bro, put some to. respect on my name. Right, right, Drake! Right, right, ab- right above ours. Drake! Right Not above too. our videos, the Recovery Room Podcast. Let me throw that in there. Recovery yeah. Room Podcast. Yeah. You know, follow, like, thing. subscribe. Do whatever you gotta anyway, do. You know. These niggas talk about anybody, however, in any type of fucking fashion that they want to. Mm-hmm. And it's okay for them to get some, some fucking blowback from it. Right. Shit, Steven Jackson and them talk shit about niggas all the time because... Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, they got that reputation as tough guys. So they got that fucking perception on them that they can talk about niggas and not fear consequences mm-hmm. because niggas know not to fuck with them. That's right. the that's the perception of me, but let's be for real, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know these niggas. These niggas might be tough. I ain't going to say that let, they let, not. Let, let's just go out here and say... <laughs> I'm not scared of Matt Barnes. I'm not scared of fucking nobody. <laughs> anyway, so I don't, I don't know. They might be tough, but nigga, maybe Kwame Brown is tough. <clears throat> but I want to get into some of the stuff that Kwame Brown has said, right? Okay. Kwame Brown thinks that it's disparaging for them to keep speaking on his name as a black man. He thinks it's hypocritical that He's a black man, and they taking all of these times out to trash him at the same time that they champion Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. He basically saying that Black Lives Matter is a fucking, um, it's just a show. It's just a put on. Mm-hmm. He said, well, not the whole organization, but I'm talking about Steven Jackson's role in it. Yeah. See, it's a, it's see, a put on because he, he championed you... Black Lives Matter, but spending all his time tearing down black people at the same time. What do you think about that? I don't know if that's what's happening because I don't listen to the All the Smoke podcast. I don't. So, you basically saying that they trying to tear Kwame Brown down? That's what Kwame Brown is saying. I, I ain't saying that. Uh-huh. Bro, I've been listening to motherfucking shit on Kwame Brown for, for years. I don't give a fuck who shits on Kwame Brown. I don't give a fuck that he shits on them back. Bro. Right. I think... If he's really doing this, because I don't watch the Up and Smoke podcast either, right? All, all the smoke. All the smoke. Whatever <laughs> it's smoke, called. That's a Dr. Dre tour. No cap. <laughs> that's what I did. Too. <laughs> that's what I did. That's why I said it. But nah, nah. I don't. Whatever they podcast call. If up he's, and, I mean, if, all the smoke. God damn. If, if he's talking about black, if he's bashing people on all the smoke, mm-hmm. and he's an advocate for Black Lives Matter, that is very hypocritical. Let yeah. me say that. It might it might seem Cause, critical, cause, but I mean, because it's like this, right? Yeah. If a nigga is so supportive, right, of let's say Jordan, mm-hmm. he wears Jordan everything, right? Right. If he wears Jordan on his shirt, his pants, and his shoes, and his socks, and his drawers every day. But if he's steady, if he wears all this Jordan material and he goes, I fucking hate Jordan. Mm-hmm. That nigga Jordan missed this many shots. He missed this many shots. He missed this many shots. That shit would be weird. But this this is the thing. With, with um, well, number one, motherfuckers probably do do that mm-hmm. already. Yeah, they, motherfuckers probably. No, no cap. <laughs> no cap. Yeah, this and is I'm a, 100% sure there's niggas out here right now that's doing shit like that. But with Kwame Brown. I eat I think, Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kwame Brown point is that I think Kwame Brown point is that you fucking with a black person who don't bother nobody. Yeah. We didn't hear from him until this week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I shit. Me personally, fuck all that, man. If Steven Jackson is a hypocrite or not, I don't give a fuck, man. That's his business, right? I mean, I he, believe he, it's a lot of people out here in the world that's hit a hip. Hypocritical. But at at the bottom, uh, um, when it come down to it, I mean, mosquitoes ate me up. When it come down to it, it seemed like Stephen Jackson was um was really heavy on the Black Lives Matter shit after one of his best friends got killed by the police. Mm -hmm. I don't really know if he was on it before then because I won't really check him for it Mm -hmm. because I don't check for Black Lives Matter because Black Lives Matter to me. It gets bu- see. I knew I was gonna do that. <laughs> it, it gets fucking um, 
Black Lives Matter, no matter how pure the intentions of some of the people that are involved in it are, mm-hmm. it gets turned into a fucking Twitter circle jerk all yeah. the time. It mm-hmm. gets turned into a, I just want to be part of something, so I'm going to say something on Twitter. The same way that motherfuckers who, that I know personally, you ain't even talking about celebrities, the same way that motherfuckers I know personally was. Mm-hmm. Talking shit and, and, and getting that DMX for being a crack addict forever. And then they was one of the first bitch ass niggas to post RIP on, online DMX. trying to get some fucking Twitter likes and shit. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at it. I don't really check for Black Lives Matter for the, because of that reason right there. Right. I look, I use, I mean, this is kind of off topic. I use the fucking shit. The, the unfortunate events that happen to people at the hands of the cops, especially mm-hmm. to try to motherfucking move better myself when it comes to them motherfuckers. Right. Right. Cause I know that it could be any of us at any time. Right. All we got to do is run across the wrong one. Nigga. I ran across some niggas like a year ago that was trying to get me. Mm-hmm. I ran across them. They was trying to get me for anything. They saw sparkling cider in my motherfucking car. They was like, how much you had to drink tonight? I was like, nigga, I don't even drink. Bro. Right. Can you read it? Say sparkling cider. <laughs> but then the motherfucker looked at me and said, why your car ain't been registered since August of 2016? I said, did you look at the whole license plate or did you just look at the one that said it August 2016? Because if you look at the other side, you see the one that say June 2020, right? Mm-hmm. The nigga was just going down his little checklist to see if he could catch me up on something until he had to let me go. And you know what this nigga said? What? Well, next time you get pulled over, have your registration in reach. Don't have to rummage around for it. Go ahead on. That's what this bitch-ass nigga said to me. Knowing good and well, bitch-ass nigga, if you ain't have a badge and gun, I would have stomped the motherfucking mud hole in you right there on the side of the street. Right. You was a little pudgy-ass Joe Pesci-looking bald-headed motherfucking <laughs> white cop. I would have beat the fuck out this nigga. This nigga wouldn't have had no chance. Right? But this nigga was talking all that shit because he had a motherfucking gun and a badge. Right. So I already know I used the, the shit that happened to people at the hands of the police to try to move better because I would have told them if I would have handled them the same way I handled them cops that pulled me over when I was 19, I would have probably got shot. Right. But <laughs> like, you got to realize you can't act like that. Well, I didn't act like that. That's I, what I'm saying. I had the fucking proof for everything they tried to do to me. I had the answer for it. Yeah, because fucking around with them police, you will get clapped. I know we went off on a tangent or whatever. You will get clapped. That's what happens over here. But get, getting back on Kwame Brown shit, nigga, I... I fuck with it. You know why? Because Kwame Brown is doing what any motherfucker would do. Yep. When you get tired of hearing motherfuckers talk shit, you talk you talk, talk your, your shit. shit back. Hmm. I I fucks with it. I don't think he should stop doing anything, and that's that goes back to that very first question you asked me. Mm-hmm. What do I think of it? Yeah. I think he is justified, and he shouldn't stop shit. And it's funny. So. I feel like he should keep doing whatever the fuck he want to do. Right, and you know, he his own man. He his own man at the end of the day. He can do whatever the fuck he want to do. What's hilarious about it? What? Like I said, I don't know if I said this in this one or in the one where the dog knocked the camera over. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny part about it is that the motherfucker is, I think I said it in this one, mm-hmm. is going up here and he don't give a damn about being politically correct. Right. That nigga is saying shit that I don't necessarily agree with when it comes to how it sounds. Like sometimes it sounds like he telling a woman stay in a woman's place. Mm-hmm. But the shit funny, bro. Like I'm not finna sit up. I mean, just because I don't necessarily agree with some of the shit that you might say. Mm hmm. Don't mean I ain't going to laugh at your shit, bro. Right. I don't agree with Richard Pryor saying he was sucking dicks, but the nigga was still funny. Still. But he was still sucking still. dicks. Like, you know? He was still funny. <laughs> so, I like, that he, I like that he don't give a fuck about being a, a politically correct dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Because I'm, I'm sick of hearing people I used to listen to 
to try to get their genuine opinion, uh, opinions or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And they hide and clutch their pearls now because they scared to get canceled. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's a radio show. I ain't gonna name drop it here because I'm still a big fan of it. I ain't trying to shit on it. Fuck it, I'm gonna name drop it. I listen to the Dan Levitar show mm-hmm. all the time. They just left ESPN, right? Right. I still listen to it every day. I still think that shit is hilarious. But motherfuckers is up there damn near on on that show, scared to say they like certain movies because. <laughs> The movie back in the day, it might have been some misogyny in it that was accepted in the 90s that's politically incorrect now. And these niggas always got to point out, oh, that's problematic. Oh, that doesn't hold up. Oh, man, shut the fuck up. What the fuck is you so bitch made for? Mm -hmm. Is niggas going to cancel you for liking how high than the nigga was slapping the white bitches with the powder? If you want to cancel me for liking that, then do it. Fuck and, you. And that is my shit. Mm-hmm. That's my shit. I love how high. But that's One what that's what I'm movies. saying. I'm not finna. I'm not finna sit up here and act because I know. I was listening to these motherfuckers before all the woke shit started happening, right? Right. And I know they real opinions on this shit. Mm-hmm. And they now they just trying to stay in line with the politically correct shit so they don't get canceled. Mm-hmm. Right. Well. My nigga, if you want to cancel me, I ain't even got started. Bring it on. Because I'm not going to stop talking. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't either. I'm not. Hey, give I'll me a one-minute warning, too. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> we ain't stopping talking. Give me a one-minute warning. Because <laughs> I lost track of your two-minute warning. <laughs> no, yeah. but... I still don't think Kwame Brown should stop. I think he should actually keep going. And that, I mean, I had only watched one of his videos, but I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start keeping it. I with watched him. all of them shits, nigga. That shit is fucking funny, bro. So like, what is he? What is he saying exactly? It depends, bro. Because I know he's talking shit, but it's like I don't really know. A, like, a lot of it is just going in on Stephen Jackson, Matt Barnes. Calling that nigga Becky with the fucking good hair. Said that nigga Matt Barnes got a finger wave. Said any motherfucker <laughs> with a finger wave ain't gonna never scare me. <laughs> Said you niggas, you niggas all called the All the Smoke podcast. And I tried to pull up and y'all told me no. Sound like you bitch ass niggas only want some of the smoke. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> shit now. <laughs> that motherfucker said Becky with the good hair. It's Derek Fisher took your bitch. That's what he said. He said that. Nah, because. <laughs> The nigga Derek Fisher was in the background right of, the, of the FaceTime with his son. I mean, Matt Barnes did pull up on Derek Fisher and whoop his ass. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, is you really winning when you pulled up on Derek Fisher to whoop his ass at your own house? Nigga <laughs> 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 they beat his ass in his hall. <laughs> in his hall. And Matt Barnes had to fucking leave after that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, we about to take a quick break. It don't sound left. like we took a break to y'all. It ain't gonna so sound like I don't we even took know shit. why the fuck I even said that. I think I said that to let our cameraman know to cut the fucking camera off. Right. Anyway. But okay. This since we took that break, I feel like now I should pose a question to you. Yeah. Right? How easy do you think it is to make a diamond song in hip hop today? Well, let's go. Let's let's number one. Let's let's use that term "easy" as a relative term, because mm-hmm. it ain't even easy to make a popular song. Okay. But let's talk about the ease of it when we talking about artists that's already at the top of shit, right? Yeah. A diamond song, I won't say is easy, right? That's ten million sales for anybody who don't know. Ten million. Right? Even though I see niggas with diamond albums, Tupac, Biggie, Eminem, you know. I think Wu Tang Forever is at like 8 million. So it's like 2 million away from being diamond. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Speaker Box Love but, Below. 12 but see, million. Like, as but, of right now, we're not even talking about albums. I know. Sure. we talking about just straight one song. I don't, one single, I don't think. One song. I don't think making a, a a diamond song is easy. Uh-huh. 
But I think making a platinum song for a popping artist is easy. A platinum song for a popping artist. So that's like mm-hmm. that's a million. Any 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 little baby song, right? Bro, that his whole fucking catalogs of singles is probably platinum. Of course, like, yeah. You look down his But list. see, you also got to think about it in the terms of the world we live in today, where you can go, you can sell a million records straight off the of streams. No, you do sell a million that's records that's off That's what of I'm streams. saying. Like, it ain't like how it used to be when niggas had to go to the store and mm-hmm. buy your album. Physically go, drive their car to the store and buy your album. Mm-hmm. And the reason I ask you this question is because me... I believe any person can make a diamond song in the world today. Nah. I believe that. Platinum, I'll give it to you, but not diamond. You don't you don't think diamond? No. Because look at tell, what it took. How about for, it? Tell me why. Well, let's look at the newest diamond record. When I say newest, I think I mean like maybe it didn't go diamond in the in the most recent time, but I mean like the newest song. And yeah. I think the newest song out this diamond, mm-hmm. at least in the hip hop circles, is Old Town Road. It's between that and that See You Again by Wiz Khalifa. But no, because I know you again is old though. I ain't talking about that, yeah, because that was from the Fast and Furious song. Yeah, but Old but, Town Road came out in like 2019. Yeah, and Old Town Road was also the fastest song to ever go diamond. But look it's at selling over. 14 million copies. But Old Town Road was number one for how many weeks for that to happen? Very long time. That's what I'm saying. A very long time. You got songs that go number one that never even go platinum. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I won't say it's easy for motherfuckers to make a diamond record because if it was easy, it would be more. Yeah. Does Travis Scott have one? I think Travis Scott might be at eight or nine million. Let me tell you how hard it is to make a diamond record. Mm -hmm. Mask off ain't diamond. Mask off is not diamond. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Travis Scott does sickle mode. Sickle oh, mode okay, sold so. 10 million exactly. Okay, sickle mode. That's just featuring one. Drake and Sway Lee. That's one. Let's give them. Let's give them they. That's, let's give them they respect. That's one though. And mm-hmm. look how popular this motherfucker is. Mm-hmm. He was so popular he drove Nicki Minaj crazy with the album sales shit. Cause her shit wasn't number one and his was. Mm-hmm. Astro World beat her album and she got mad. That's mm-hmm. how popular this nigga is. A fucking person with a crazed fucking fan base like Nicki Minaj mm-hmm. got grown ass men calling themselves barbs. Yeah. I mean, and he got one. You know what I'm saying? So, but I think that a, a platinum record, I mean, you can damn near fucking uh, shit one of those out at this point in time. I mean, look at, let's, let's look at, uh, at, at, at when it's, when it comes to streaming, let's look at like, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. When Damn came out, the whole fucking album was on the Billboard Top 100. Mm -hmm. Every song. Even bullshit that wasn't songs, like the fucking intro and all that. Yeah. Like that shit. Like Duckworth? Mm -hmm. Well, Duckworth is a song. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's kind of like the last song. Yeah, but it's still a song. I'm talking about like the intro. Like, ain't. ain't. Because usually niggas, I don't really see niggas' last songs even being on the Billboard. Well, I mean, uh, what's the last song on, on Dirty Sprite? Ain't Fuck Up Some Commas the last song on that? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if your song is like Fuck Up Some Commas, but most <laughs> niggas' last song don't be like Fuck Up. Matter of fact, um, the last song on Views from the Six is Hotline Bling. Or unless the last <laughs> so, song Hotline Bling. <laughs> so, I guess. I don't see too many. But you know what I'm saying, like, I don't know. The re- I don't really know. I just feel like in this day and age. That song is fucking garbage. How did that shit go down? What, congratulations? Yeah. You got to think about it. Congratulations play dropped play when that. a lot of motherfuckers was graduating. I was about to say, play that graduation. <laughs> we played that shit at our graduation. <laughs> in 2017, boom, we were saying, congratulations. Bro, his fucking other song from the Spider-Man movie is better than that shit. No, Sunflower? Yeah. Sunflower is the shit. Post Malone, you did your thing, buddy. <laughs> that shit was fire. That but shit. I believe Post Malone with Congratulations deserved to sell 10 million because that, that shit, shit was an actual good song. But Fuck this is that. a song that surprised me the most. Fetty Wops. That didn't surprise queen. me. Not at all, bro. That's But that the... shit was also everywhere. That shit is one of the fucking... Um, 
it's one of the first viral sensations. Not, I mean, Soldier Boy is a viral sensation. Mm-hmm. That nigga at, was he. But, he makes it known that he was the first to do everything. <laughs> was, he, was he the first to, do to go to Ice Box? But he still owed them niggas twenty bands allegedly. Anyway, let me say that. Um, let me say that. Soldier Boy was that. a viral sensation. So, but I'm talking about in the present day. Mm-hmm. Like Trap Queen was one of the first ones, like that really blew up just off the internet. Because I remember when that shit came on. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope, I, I'm wrong about that. Mm-hmm. Don't like was really like the first one. Oh, nigga, oh, that's but, that shit I don't. Like, anyway, bang, bang. like Trap Queen was still one of them early joints. Mm. Got you. Um, he, I remember seeing that song on World Star Hip Hop, like, and I didn't never who no never heard of who the fuck Fetty Wap was. And next thing I know, that shit was the number one song in the country. Right. Like a week later. Bro. Yeah. Like, and I remember like. Me personally, I never liked Trap Queen. Still don't. That's just not a that song shit I like. That garbage. I don't like it either. I don't like it. I respect it. But that motherfucker is diamond. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Fetty Wap is still eating off that song. Hell yeah. That's what. Nigga, so like, Sir Mix a Lot is still eating off of Baby Got Back. That nigga, like, he, t- he said he made $100 million off that shit. Trap Queen is only five years old. Baby mm-hmm. Got Back is older than me. Mm-hmm. And I'm the old nigga up in this motherfucker right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah. But some of the other artists, Drake, of course. Now he probably got, I don't know. God's Plan sold $11 million. What? Nah. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Fuck that. Nah, bro. you gotta. Even if you don't like the song, you gotta respect what the song did. He took the money from the video. The you took the money used to make the video, and just gave it away. Bro, the fucking song is diamond because of the video. God's plan. It's his. God's it's, plan. Um, That's that is shit. Is one dance diamond? One dance? No, I don't see one dance on this list. That shit. It might be than, close. God's plan is a bad song, bro. I, I like um, I like the song with the viral dance to it way better. Um, Kiki, do you love me? In my Jordan? feelings. In yeah, my feelings. Yeah, yeah, that shit. That one's good. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, don't get me wrong. The fucking Scorpion album. I like that shit. Mm-hmm. God's plan is just a fucking turd. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's it. Like, I mean, what is, what is it I even respect about? you, but I don't think God's plan is that bad. She say, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love my bed and my mama. I'm sorry. This nigga literally had everybody thinking he was talking about his bed. <laughs> and he was talking about his Fuck kid. Fuck that. He was talking about his kid. Nah, for real. Happy. That went down Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not surprised. Did fuck you by C logo? <laughs> no. I wish that shit did, bro. Nah, that would have been a good song that went viral though. And the it Hills, did go viral. My weekend went uh, not viral, but so went diamond. Mm-hmm. Weekend, the hills went diamond. Man, but it's still not easy. Let me say, it's not easy, right? But it also is not hard. Yes, it is. I don't think so, because. Fetty Wap, Trap Queen, went diamond. It sold 10 million copies. But the shit right? was popular. That's why it's very, hard. Very, very, That's very popular. Very popular song. Very popular, very catchy, whatever you want to call it. But it wasn't good. But do you know how hard it is? You know how hard it is to Apparently not. all the words Apparently the not. To make Apparently a mixture of not. words that a whole Apparently mass of not. people. Apparently not. That. She my trap queen, let her hit the bando. Bro, that shit is catchy, bro. It's catchy, <laughs> but it's not if good. It wasn't, if it wasn't it's that not easy, good. It what is easy? your favorite song? Of all time of right now. Of all time. Oh. Of all time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You go first. You too. What's your favorite song? Can we hear yours? Bro, first? my favorite song. My right. song. My favorite song don't matter. Okay. Bro, I, I don't. I don't you have. Like, a, don't like I don't Fiddy really Wap. have a favorite song, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I like too many songs to have a favorite. Right. Like, okay. What's your? What's the best song out right now that you that you can listen to every day? Right now. Yes. 
and this might be biased. Yes. Say whatever you I, want. I have two songs. Say okay. whatever you want. Is it the fucking Youngin Ace and Foolio shits? Nah. Do 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 do. What? Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Definitely the two that I'll go with right now. Yeah. J. Cole, mm-hmm. the My Life with 21 Savage. Good song. And I love that song. Kodak Black, Dirty K. Dirty K? Okay. okay. I could listen to those all day right Would now. Would you put either of them songs over Trap Queen? Or is any of them songs better or but bro, equal to Trap we Queen? We're not no. talking about fucking quality. At the, time, the time at the time that these songs were So released, could those songs have came back in 2015 and been hot? Yeah, yeah, because trapping right. was probably at an all-time high, or like everybody in the world. All of the story, fucking trap queen ain't that good. It's not. It's Nigga, not a lot of shit good. on this list ain't that good. A lot of these songs That's on this list are way shit better. By Post Malone that song is, is shit. way better. Bruh. Congratulations. Hey, no. You want to know why that went platinum? Why? Because they released that right before a graduation. And time. guess so what? We just said that. We just song, said that. That's, That's what I'm saying. It's all that. about a time and a placing that can do anything. To the so world, bro. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'm gonna tell you, but I, I'm. No, 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 no. It's not even songs. Like, a, it's I'm not a, even like I'm shitting on Fetty Wap. Like I hate this nigga. Like I don't hate Fetty Wap. I fucks with. I got a song. It's actually a fucking remix that he did to fucking uh, Future Song. I don't know what it's called, but I fucks with it and I love it. And I used to listen to that shit on YouTube every day. No cap. But Trap Queen, my nigga. Trap Queen, my nigga. That's why, because... Bro, even as a kid back in 2015 or whenever it dropped, because it was around that time. It was 2015. 2015, yeah. I would hear that back then and turn that shit off. Cause it's but like, that ain't got what? shit to do but with so you're shit, So you telling bro? me if you, in 2015, if you were in the club or if you were at a party... I won't. And no you heard, I'm just saying, if you were at a party, right? Yeah. And you heard Trap Queen going off... And everybody was getting lit. You would feel that vibe of that song. That's I probably know. why you don't know, like, because the mass, like, the people who was getting streams and doing all that, actually paying for the music back then, that was actually the age. Mm-hmm. They were out in the club and they felt that and they song. They felt that. They song. felt it. You might have just listened to it in a car or in the house and mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, it's all right." But you never heard that beat come in booming when you in the club and you lit. I feel you. Lit, I feel you. It's and a I'm lot willing of people to. You. I'm willing to listen to Fetty Wap every day for the next week. For the next week, until we do the next Bro, podcast, look, look, to it's a really time see. Like, look, but new no, if, if, than if, if a you song well. should still be good and if it should be worthy of fucking going diamond, but then you, it should be you, timeless. You ignoring, it should be timeless. You ignoring that shit. You ignoring the biggest factor, bro. What? Let me let me ask you a question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, man, you you might like this shit, mm-hmm. right? But how many motherfucking people? Mm-hmm. Speaking of this list, do you think still fuck with Don't Break My Heart, My Achy Breaky Heart by the same motherfucker who did the song with Lil Nas X? Mm-hmm. Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah, well, I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. But that shit was heavy too back then. That was then. heavy. That was heavy but this, back then. This is the thing, though. That was heavy back then. The song I'm going to give you that. That you know, shit was crazy, heavy. Though. You know it's crazy. That shit was heavy, <laughs> but it didn't go down. That shit well, we didn't go down. We don't know if it did or not. Bro. Achy Breaky Heart? Let's yeah. go. You know, but, but you know what's is, crazy about Fetty Wap though? What's up? I will want to say, like, I will say that it might have to do with his eyes that he kind of went diamond too. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what it is, man. But I'm saying, on any time at this time, it's <laughs> social media. <laughs> all publicity is good publicity. Oh, for real. It might be his eye. But this, look, this, it might be his this, eye. This is what made Fetty Wap go diamond, bro. Mm-hmm. This is what made all the songs on Make that. Breaky Breaky Heart did not go diamond. So one million, but, but you but, gotta think about the time. You gotta think about the time. Social media, man. You gotta think about that time right there, boy. That's a whole different time. Let's pull something up though. Yeah. Achy breaky heart. Mm-hmm. Not diamond. But That's 1992. Think from the album. Let's let's look at this though. Album. Yeah. Damn near diamond. Album went nine times platinum. So. That's almost done. Okay. One more. Okay. Okay. But, but hold on, hold on. I, even, I even add that plus one. Stop, I had that plus stop. one. Though. A whole album versus a song, though, is different, though. Yeah. Num- number one, the, the the biggest factor in this shit going diamond is that motherfuckers don't have to buy it. Bro, right. That's what yeah. you look. It's yeah. what you overlooking. Right. Yeah. This shit is a stream. Fifteen hundred streams count as a sale now. Fifteen hundred. 
So you don't have to buy it, bro. This shit probably got over a billion plays just on YouTube. Bro. No. That's why this shit is diamond, exactly. bro. It don't That's matter. That's exactly right there. It only had to Every be popular Every song that went diamond has a billion views probably on YouTube. Mm. Yeah, bro. That, that fucking Despacito shit. Who was still singing that? God's playing got a billion views. <laughs> Despacito was he the... He hates God's playing. It got a billion views and it went diamond. He, hey, if you think my Fetty Wap ran is bad, he hates God's plan. Fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just think... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we want to go on a Drake talk right now because no, I don't. Niggas know how I feel about Drake. You don't like Drake? No, I like Drake. I like Drake too. Fetty Wap Trap Queen got seven hundred and thirty-four <laughs> million views on YouTube. But that's what I'm saying, man. What the official audio got? It's fucking official free, audio. bro. I, how much? How much y'all have to pay? Y'all all got iPhones except me. How much is Apple Music? Five fucking dollars a month. Five ten dollars. Five ten dollars. Five ten dollars. All right, then. Five dollars a month, and and you can listen to whatever the fuck you want. Five to ten. Niggas ain't niggas ain't getting no sweat off their back listening to Trap Queen. And on top of that, Trap Queen was so popular at the time it was right. in every fucking popular playlist. Exactly. That's automatic streams. I give you that. I give you that Trap Queen went ten million, and it, it and it might be good to some people and. The time that it was in, it made it a great song, but I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. No, it wasn't a great song. It was just popular. The song is a piece of shit. I agree with you. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, man, that's it. I don't even know how we got on that. It's something in the Double XL magazine, which means we shouldn't have ever paid it any attention anyway. Right. Because it's in the Double XL magazine. Right. Anyway, man, we going to go ahead on, do this motherfucking independent shit because I got to go. The camera is dying on us. I don't know how the cameraman slash editor extraordinaire is even going to fix this choppy ass shit because this shit been all over the place. So he got work ahead of him. St. Nick, old hoes, independent spotlight. Stop snitching. Yeah, yeah. Six nine. Got to watch the six nine video. Anyway, let me pause this shit. Can you niggas relate? Turn it down, so turn it down, so let it keep playing. Though. So let's let's talk about it a little bit. I feel like Old Hoes by St. Nick is a very easy to listen to song. I like the beat. I like what he's talking about. He's talking about something throughout the whole song. Something very relatable to a lot of people. It ain't relatable to me. I mean, maybe not, but it's relatable to some people. Once I get this done song with a def- chick, I don't give the fuck what she thinks. I'm gone. This she song could definitely happy, have a lot of... Sad or somewhere in between. It could be a yeah, lot of people that relate to this. But yeah. moral of the story, I think this is a great song. Like I said, well, I like easy to song. listen to. Good lyrics, good beat. Saint Nick. I got. I, I was listening to this shit, and this shit sounded like a G Funk song, right from back on that West Coast type, all that. Mm-hmm. And then when I was hearing him rap, he dropped the motherfucking uh, above the law lyric mm-hmm. in there. I don't even know if he did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. As everybody knows, well, nobody in here probably knows, but you about to find out. Dr. Dre did not invent G-Funk. That nigga just got rich off of it. Above the law invented that shit. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, they was with him on Ruthless Records back in the day. They got the first G-Funk album that ever really hit the mainstream. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? So, anyway, he dropped the motherfucking uh, Cold 187 lyric. I'm cold like the middle of the winter. That nigga dropped that shit. He added December in there. So, I wonder, is this nigga a G-Funk fan? 
He probably never heard the fucking song that I'm talking about because this nigga look mad young. So, <laughs> anyway, this shit is cold, though. You know why? Because it took some old, uh, old style and it brought it up to the, the fucking current times, right? Mm-hmm. It took a G-Funk type of UGK 90s type of shit. And he took that type of beat and put the modern spin on it, like the slang that niggas is using these days, like going outside and shit. Mm -hmm. A nigga as old as me probably shouldn't even know what the fuck that means, but I do. And I just like when niggas can respect the roots of the genre and still put a modern spin on shit. Right. Right? That's how you make your shit timeless. Yeah. And I feel like this was a great song. I Definitely it, better bro. than Trap Queen by Fetty Wap. Well, it is better than Trap Queen by Fetty Wap. So hopefully my mans can sell 10 million copies of it. Hopefully. And on top of that, mm-hmm. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I lost my well, train of thought. Fuck. Recovery Room Podcast. Damn, man. I, I hate forgetting shit. What's up? I'm trying to remember what the fuck I was going to say. Mm-hmm. That shit just left. It left. That shit got just some left. Tie some string around your finger. Bro, what the fuck you talking about? No, no cap. I seen it in a cartoon one time. I think it was. Yeah, I'm going to tie some string around my finger, all right, man. We're going to have to just end it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We out.